Hi guys, your buddy Warshack here. So what am I doing reading a bloody IDW comic book? Well, it's just because this man here, you know, Damien Worm, I love his artwork. I can see him um, surrounding this book. Um, it's just a couple of my black metal CDs. Yeah, I'm the guy who still buys CDs. <laughs> um, the darkness still draws me in, you know. Does that sound corny? I hope so. But there's a... Um, a reality behind the Ouija board thing here, which you see on the front cover. And I know there's a reality behind it because I've experienced it myself. I can remember when I was a kid doing a Ouija board. I was a kid, how old was I? Um, 15, 16? Oh yeah, I remember doing a Ouija board with my, with my mates, with my mate's house. Right. And we, being stupid kids, asked the Ouija board the question that you really shouldn't be asking. Um, when are we gonna die? That question. Um, I got a good answer. Apparently, my death um, was not predestined to be an early one, but uh, lots of the friends around the Ouija board with me were told that they're not going to be living for much longer, and well, the Ouija board was not lying to them. Those people who were around the Ouija board with me, and many of them are not alive today. So, there is something real about a Ouija board that you don't really want to be too flippant with and um, I advise you to leave it well in your way alone, well alone. Don't screw with them. Another time I did a Ouija board and I was a little bit younger than that. Um, I did it in my own house and the cat went nuts throwing itself against the um, patio window. So what's happening with the Ouija board, my opinion anyway at least, is that you're opening portals and uh, you don't necessarily um, control what is coming through. It might get into your mind, start screwing with you. So don't do it, kids. Uh, this book, The October Faction, Supernatural Dreams, um, narratively speaking, is nowhere near as exciting as those two tales that I just told you. Um, this is just a a plodding, perfunctory, demon kills kids, um, let's investigate kind of book. Um, the only enjoyment really to be had in it is in the artwork from Damien Worm. He's a guy who I'd, I'd like to see him work in, in more mainstream comic books and not just the, the far left twits of IDW. So I'm just delving into this IDW book only because of the artwork really and just the yeah, the, the lure of the darkness. But if there was no Damien Worm on this book, uh, I would not be doing this video now because I would not have purchased the book. Let's look at that. Let's just look at some of the artwork actually because the story is, yeah, like I said a second ago, completely perfunctory. It's background to the artwork. There's barely any effort put into the story at all. It's just a, <clears throat> a family who are talking about what they need to do now, the, the patriarch has retired and there he is and he's saying well kids if you don't uh, get this paranormal business that uh, I started up and running and uh, get a little bit more work and um, you're gonna have to get jobs jobs haha <laughs> very funny I remember actually a scene from you know, the misfits with Marilyn Monroe Clark Gable and Montgomery Clift there was a, obviously a lot better scene than this. When they were talking about, not jobs, but, but wages. The idea that um, the least appetising thing they can possibly think of would be to work for somebody else. And uh, I think we need to get back to that. We need to get back to the idea of doing things for ourselves rather than relying on other people. And just, yeah, just the, the cowboys in The Misfits the, the, just the mere idea of them working for someone else was completely anathema to them. They, um, they couldn't believe that anyone would do that. It's almost akin to slavery, really working with someone else. Anyway, bit of a bit of a tangent there, because there's not much to talk about in this book apart from how gloriously gothic he looks, art speaking. So most of this then is just the, the kids screwing around. And from here, we move to a Ouija board. I was a little bit confused here because I wasn't sure if this, if these people were the same as uh, these people. 
for these people here. Oh, and there's something going on with a werewolf who wants to um, be a human again, but if he's a human again, he's, he'll have to suffer the effects of, um, of cancer. And cancer can't be cured even by supernatural means. And, you know, I guess you have to know these people to care. Anyway, from there, they, they transition to another uh, family. And um, maybe the, the transition wasn't um, clear cut, so I was a bit confused here. Was there, I know that house was smaller than the house of the main family. There we go, that's the house of the main family. And this is the house of the new one. But they're similarly gothic looking with the windows, so it's quite easy to be confused on first read. But okay, so this is a new family. Um, we've got some, some teenagers here messing around with a Ouija board. And uh, they have an even worse experience than I did. So they don't get a premonition of their impending deaths or a cat throwing itself against a the window. They conjure up a you know, Baphomet. And there we go, let's see. A highlight of the book again, Damien Worm's art. I did actually call up the devil when I was doing the Ouija board with the, you know, the one where the cat threw itself against the window. And I suggest that's probably why the cat threw herself against the window. But uh, he didn't uh, materialise in the room, thankfully. Maybe he messed with my mind for all these years. And perhaps that's why I'm still doing YouTube videos at my grand old age rather than uh, getting on with life and being more productive. Perhaps the lingering effects of demonic possession are still with me today. But don't do Ouija boards, kids. It's not a good idea. Anyway, in the, in the story form of um, Ouija board messing around with, <laughs> that's a good sentence, um, Baphomet kills the kids. And then we've got quite a br brutal panel here. <laughs> I detest teenagers. And that's actually pretty funny. I don't know if it was meant to be. Yeah, teenagers can be a little bit uh, tiresome, you know. <laughs> I won't, won't go that, that far though, too. Briefly murder them, maybe just you know, leave the room and go somewhere else. Okay, and so they, they finally got something to do. Maybe the family. Fast forward a little bit. So they go looking for something to do. Now they've got something to do. And it ends with the thrilling panel of after seeing what he did to those kids, I'm thinking Jeff and I should maybe go at this one alone. Yeah, okay. Wow, I can't wait for the next issue then. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, cliffhanger, Steve. Uh, yeah, the story is black, but look at that art. It's nice, isn't it? Nice to look at. Top job by Damien Worm, even if the story by Steve Niles is yeah, at best. So there we go, October Faction, Supernatural Dreams. Um, get it if, like me, you are a bit of a, an old school black metal head goth type but don't expect um, fireworks from the story you don't get any leftism with it but has it got anything to say well apart from the fact that you shouldn't mess around with Ouija boards and that you can't cure cancer I don't really think it's got anything to say at all uh, it's not terrible but it's not particularly good I guess that's the best you can hope for from IDW nowadays anyway End review there. Thanks for checking it out. Please like and subscribe um, if you'd be so kind. Uh, looking forward to the comments as always. Do you recognise any of these bands? If so, yeah, let me know about it in the comments down below. So I'll be off now. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. I'll be back as always. Later.